This short film will introduce you to the world of structured products. It will familiarize you with certain key terms like risk and return, diversification, payoff, put and call options, and structured products. This film is an introduction to the world of structured products and seeks to provide an understanding of basic interrelationships. Investors are expressly urged to obtain comprehensive personal advice from a professional prior to making an investment in financial products. This film in no way represents a substitute for such advice. The focus is on our investors who are looking to increase their assets by investing them sensibly. We'll approach the topic in three steps. Asset classes, derivatives, structured products. Let's first have a look at what our investment options are. Regardless of the type of assets invested in, higher returns require a willingness to accept correspondingly higher risk. But our investors want high returns with low risk. One way to solve this is with a portfolio, i.e. a combination of a variety of assets. It serves as a compromise between what the market offers and what investors expect. They need to find a way to balance the desire for high returns against the capacity to tolerate risk. Let's look now at combining several assets. For instance, the shares of a pharmaceutical company and those of a manufacturing company. These two stocks don't always act the same way. While both are subject to similar macroeconomic factors, they are influenced, both positively and negatively, by news specific to the company independently of one another. This means that the price of one can rise while that of the other falls. If a portfolio contains both stocks, then price fluctuations are mitigated to some degree. This diversification effect ensures that as additional assets are included, portfolio risk will tend to decrease without reducing the return on average. The larger the number of assets, the greater this diversification effect. A portfolio containing 15 stocks is less risky than one with only two stocks. The principle of diversification works even better when investments are made in a variety of asset classes. When stock and bonds are also combined with real estate and commodities, price movements are offset to an even greater degree. By reducing price fluctuations, a still greater improvement is achieved in the risk-return relationship. Let's now look at an individual stock with respect to its potential for gains and losses. At the start of the year, the stock costs 50 Swiss francs. If the price of the stock rises, e.g. to 70 Swiss francs, this results in a gain of 20 Swiss francs. If the price of the stock falls, e.g. to 30 Swiss francs, this results in a loss of 20 Swiss francs. If the result of all possible price scenarios is depicted at the end of the investment period, this will provide a payoff diagram of the resulting gains or losses under the various scenarios. In designing structured products, derivatives play a central role. These include options which are based on an underlying, e.g. a stock. We're already familiar with investment in stocks. If the price goes up in a positive market environment, a bull market, the investor will be satisfied since he will have succeeded in increasing his assets. But if the price drops in a bear market, the investor will be unhappy since his assets will have shrunk. However, wouldn't it be more interesting if the investor could wait until the end of the year to decide whether to buy the stock? If the stock price were trending positively, he could buy the stock, and if the price were declining, he could pass on it. The right to decide at a later point whether to buy is termed a call option. Holding this option is very advantageous since in a negative market environment, the investor doesn't need to purchase the stock, while in favorable market situations, he realizes a gain. The opportunity to use a call option to realize a gain is valuable, 
Accordingly, there is a cost associated with acquiring such a right, the option premium. This has to be paid at the beginning of the term. It reduces the result, regardless of the trend, in the stock price. If the investor decides to acquire a call option, he first pays the premium. An agreement is reached on the future purchase price, the strike price. If the price of the stock goes up, the investor will be happy to purchase the stock at the end of the term for the initially stipulated strike price. In doing so, he realizes a gain. However, the gain is somewhat smaller than it would have been had the stock been purchased directly, since of course an upfront premium was paid. But it can also work out differently. If the price of the stock goes down, the investor will forego his right of purchase and let the option expire. This means that he has not been particularly affected by the stock's decline in price. All the same, he has to bear a small loss since, of course, the option premium was already paid. But this loss is much smaller than it would otherwise have been had he purchased the stock from the outset, being limited merely to the premium. In this case, he doesn't suffer a total loss thanks to his investment in the option. Thus, a call option is always interesting when the price goes up. But we can also acquire the right to sell a stock at an agreed strike price. This type of contract is termed a put option. A put option is interesting when we have negative market expectations. If the stock experiences a drop in price, the put option enables the stock to be sold at a higher price upon expiry than would be possible on the exchange. If, on the other hand, the price of the stock goes up, it would not be worth exercising the put option, which would then expire. Here as well, the premium is paid at the beginning, representing the maximum possible loss that could be experienced. Structured products are financial instruments that have special qualities. They offer various advantages for investors. They often consist of combining underlyings with one or more derivatives. Structured products constitute independent securities and harbor issuer risk, comparable to a bond. The structured product is purchased from the issuer, for instance, a bank, and has a fixed term. When the structured product becomes due, the issuing bank disperses either money, underlyings, e.g. shares of stock, or a combination of the two to the investor. There are four main categories of structured products. Each of them fulfills different investor needs. The first category covers capital protection products. They enable participation in an underlying and, at the same time, offer protection for the invested capital, e.g. at a level of 95%. This capital protection can be improved still further by foregoing some of the potential gain. While investors expect the market to rise, they don't rule out price declines either. If the market goes up, the investor realizes a gain. If it goes down, the loss is limited. In the latter case, the investor gets a return of 95 Swiss francs on his investment of 100 Swiss francs with the maximum loss being limited to 5 Swiss francs. In order to limit losses, the investor has to sacrifice only a part of the potential gain. This rules out large losses even if the price of the underlying should drop sharply. The second category covers yield enhancement products. Investors who tend to assume that markets are trending sideways would nevertheless like to increase their earnings on the stock markets. With a yield investment product, they realize a gain even when the price changes very little, if at all. If the price of the stock goes down, so does the price of the product, although less sharply. However, in a strongly rising stock market, this product has only limited benefit since the potential gain is limited as well. The third category covers participation products. The focus of these products is on diversification. They permit low-cost, transparent participation 
in markets to which many investors have no direct access. As we've seen earlier, this enables portfolio diversification to be substantially improved. In this way, investors are able to take part with little capital in current trends in entire markets or sectors and, through indirect investment, achieve broad diversification in stock, commodities and real estate markets. This can bring large gains as well as losses. Finally, the fourth category covers leverage products. Investors who have a clear market expectation, whether upward or downward, invest in leverage products. These enable disproportionately large returns to be achieved if the expectation materializes. If the expectation does not materialize, the resulting losses are disproportionate to the same extent. Leverage products often consist of normal put or call options that are issued as independent securities, so-called warrants. In sum, the structured product segment offers a large choice of solutions that can meet virtually every investor need.